<laughs> what up everybody uh welcome to why tesla matters thank you all for coming through today and tuning in on youtube today we're going to talk about tesla from two different lenses first how have they are uh First, how Tesla is poised to create the largest company in the world with almost a single product, the robo taxi, and how this is going to affect all of our lives, Tesla nerds or not. The second is Tesla's impact on the world. What does that mean for the planet if Tesla becomes the world's biggest company? How is that going to affect our lives every day? Because I think that's way cooler than the stock. But first, because everybody knows me from, you know, investing, and that's why I started my YouTube channel, we're going to talk about Tesla the GOAT, which is, I think, the GOAT for the planet, but also the GOAT stock and company. So Tesla stock and we're gonna get this this is gonna be only like five minutes of nerdy math and then we're gonna get to the fun stuff i promise but for the nerds tesla stock up twenty thousand percent since ipo what's crazy about this at one trillion dollar companies one of the largest in the world is we're just getting started i think tesla's going to become a ten trillion dollar company now let's map out how that happens so First, when you think about what Tesla is and what's the disruption, we start with the dumb phone, Apple turns it into a computer, that unlocks hundreds of billions, if not trillions of new value, changing the use case of that technology. Tesla's poised to turn the car into a computer and make a similar disruption that is also multi-trillions of dollars. This is why Apple's investing in this, Amazon, uh, Google, every big tech company is going for the self-driving car because they know this is the next big computing platform. So. This is what Tesla's ushered in, the era of the smart car. Everything is run by software. This is like going from analog to digital. Software is eating the world. This is what it looks like. Now, there's 1.4 million of these sold worldwide in 2022, producing $80 billion of revenue. Tesla pretty much has a single product. They don't do any marketing or any uh, advertising at all, and they produced $80 billion of revenue this year. And this is why I say, I believe they are the fastest growing company of all time, especially when you adjust for the fact that they build everything in-house themselves. So like Tesla makes the battery packs, assembles the vehicles. This is very untraditional and unlike any other automaker. That means they got to put up all the money to, in factories to scale. So that is really difficult and capital intensive. Yet, despite that, Tesla has been able to compound their revenue to 80 billion from 2 billion nine years ago at 51% per year, records every single year. And even better than that, or more impressive, the profitability is improving at an even faster rate, 55%. And I'm gonna tell you why these above 50% number matters in a second. So up until 2019, Tesla was not profitable. They were in startup mode, investing. If you told me the company might fail, it's still a startup, is Elon Musk a fraud? I would have been like, maybe because they've never made a profit. But now that's frankly bullshit. Tesla's gone from $2 billion, poised to hit $15 billion in profit this year. Uh, that's making them one of those profitable companies in the world, compounding at 174%. So their even profit on the bottom line is compounding even more than their top line, which is already going at an insane rate. So this is just the math. And I get, it kind of even gets boring because it's just like up and to the right with really big numbers. But this is so much work goes into this. And it is so rare that you see a company with this size go for this long and be able to put up this type of growth. So let's just crunch the valuation. 300 bucks a share, 3.6 billion shares fully diluted. We're looking at about a $1.1 trillion company right now. So at 1.1 trillion, what are we valuing at Tesla? Is that worth it? 15 in profit, 15 billion in profit this year on 1.1 trillion, 1.4% yield or 72 times earning ratio. So that is traditionally expensive. The stock market trades at 15 to 20 times earnings, grows at 7%. Why is Tesla worth 72? Because they're gonna grow their earnings at 50% for years to come, uh, compressing all of those multiples and then making it look extremely cheap. So the gist is we are in the era of hyper change. Companies are growing faster than ever, bigger than ever. It's not just like, oh, we have a thousand stores. Next year we'll open eight more stores and grow tiny incrementally. No, Tesla is making huge moves. Looks like a totally different company they did three years ago. So you have to take this into account when uh, looking at the valuation. So this 50% number is so important. Typically, growth companies are compounding 10 to 20%. If Tesla, which is guided to grow vehicle deliveries at 50%, that means their earnings power, the potential cash they make goes up by 50% this year. If it's a dollar in profits this year, the next year 150, the next year 225. This compounds and grows at an insane rate. So this is the reason Tesla looks uh, is cheap, even though it looks expensive. So this is just really nerding out, but if you assume 50% growth on the bottom line, 40 on the top line for the next two years, this is basically saying if Tesla slows growth immediately from today, what does it look like at maturity in 2030? It looks like 130, 150 billion in profit, over half a trillion in revenue. That's more profit than Apple. So this is already showing me Tesla in seven years, slowing down growth dramatically is on track to be where Apple is today. Now let's talk about 
why I'm so co convinced in this growth. It's like, okay, they're going to grow hella. Sure, Gally, that's just an assumption. Easy to say. Well, here's why I think it's going to happen. First of all, they continue to bring down pricing. You try and order a Tesla today, your weight is crazy. Like, what more do you need to know other than, like, you got to wait the longest to get a Tesla, and they're scaling production the fastest for demand to be the biggest. And so right now, 93% of the revenue comes from basically one product, the Model 3 or Y. And this product is compounding at 58%. So if you think of Tesla like selling computers kind of, they sell 58% more computers each year. It's just that their computers have wheels on them. And what's even crazier nerding out is the gross margin. So on a typical, you know, $10,000 car, $10,000 worth of car sales, the average car company is making 15% margin, $1.5,000 in gross profit. Tesla last quarter, despite growing like crazy, 29%, double the industry standards. That means you're already seeing that like Tesla's so like proving that it's not a car company, that its profitability is unlike anything we've ever seen. A lot more like Apple when you look at the financials than something like Ford or GM. Another lens to look at this, if you're a super finance nerd, return on invested capital. Basically, if I give you a bunch of money, what's the return on that capital? And the reason why I believe Tesla can be the, the biggest company in the world is because they can deploy the most capital at the highest rate. It's not just about deploying 50 bucks at a 50% ROIC. It's about deploying 500 billion at a, at a ROIC that's high. So right now, it's 17%. You can see Tesla's ROIC going through the roof. 4 GM, 3%, 5%. This is already crushing them. And this isn't even what Tesla's really putting up because they're building three factories on the world so this is really suppressing the actual true value of tesla's roic which is really going to end at 30 percent above apple so when you think about it on a revenue basis um, it should actually be valued above apple at maturity because it's more profitable per dollar in revenue and this is before they've even unveiled the robo taxi so when i said tesla needs one product to become the biggest pro uh, company in the world it's this it's something that doesn't exist yet um, but they've acknowledged and hinted at the model robo taxi a fully self-driving car with no steering wheel that with the touch of a button on the tesla app will come to you bring you anywhere for a fraction of the cost of uber with zero emissions in the same safest vehicle ever. This is going to like, it's hard to fathom how this changes society, but it basically boils down to you can get an Uber for two bucks to move stuff for people. Now it's 20 cents. And that's going to change the economics of so many different businesses and distribution around the world and make Tesla capture from right now, what is it? 0.1% of miles driven on the road, 0.5% of all miles driven in the world are on a Tesla. Soon that's going to go to 20 and 30%. And it's not just because they scale their car production by 50 or 60x, but it's they scale car production and the utilization of those vehicles increases dramatically as well because they're autonomous and they can just be driving people around all day. Right now our cars sit in our garage for 95% of the time and we're not getting the most value out of that asset. 100,000, 200,000 in profit for a car that they typically sold for 50,000 today. So it's just a total gain, but it costs the same for Tesla to make it because it's all software. So this is where it's like the holy grail of all business models. So I think Tesla scales to 20 million cars by 2030. This is my rough estimate of what that looks like. That's about I don't know, I want to say 20% of global auto sales. Tesla captures 20% market share. You are here. That's how early we still are, even though they're already one of the biggest companies in the world. That's how much growth is left. 20 million cars, just to give you a flavor, if we assume 50K in profit per car at 20 million cars, that's tw uh, $1 trillion in profit per year. So these are the crazy numbers. If you're like, how does Tesla become a multi-trillion dollar company? Well, it's like, if they pull this off, it's gonna be in the bag. And that's why every other tech company is racing to hit that goal because they know how much money uh, is at the other end. Okay, we're done with the boring part. Impact. So I think the craziest part of all this is Tesla's built one of the biggest companies in the world and they've produced more energy than they've consumed to do it. So literally the solar panels that Tesla's created have produced more energy than all of their factories have used to build over a million electric cars. This is what a real zero emission company looks like. Not buying credits, not like telling you all these greenwashing, but literally producing more energy than you consume yourself. So I just think this is so admirable and this is why tesla is so much different than every other company out there because instead of just talking the talk about green they actually walk the walk and that's what i respect the most 8.4 million metric tons of co2 saved that's already just now and i think tesla's just getting started this is going to be looked at as a total change in the trajectory of human emissions that tesla succeeded electrified the fleet of the world and instead of having gas cars for another 50 years and polluting the world and fucking us all up we're actually going to get off that shit now because of tesla and that's going to make the biggest difference in 50 to 70 years when we talk about the effects of climate change. So let's nerd out about the car business, starting with this super sexy, fast luxury car, the Model S Plaid. Um, you wouldn't even think like, okay, Tesla's just a niche small company. They are huge in EVs. Tesla sells more electric cars than almost anyone in the world combined. Look at this chart. Tesla single-handedly leading the electric revolution. I think that's so important. And like, we just don't give them enough cred for literally putting the team on their back. <laughs>
<laughs> okay. And if you're like, well, Galley, electric cars aren't even that sustainable. So this is the up-to-date data today. The average, if you live in the U.S. and you get an ICE car, your life cycle emissions are between 400 and 500 grams of CO2 per mile. The Model 3, with the current grid mix across all of the U.S., um, is 3x more sustainable or like 75% less than that. So even just today, even though the grid still has fossil fuels and coal, we're looking at a dramatic improvement by switching over to Teslas. If we go to a state like New York, which is more sustainable energy in its grid, bam, Tesla's even more sustainable. Like you see that number, the up, down, like even more. And then you look at the chart to the left, when we talk about ride sharing use cases, sharing the vehicle makes it even more efficient. So we're looking over there like 90% more efficient per mile traveled in terms of overall carbon output for the life cycle of the vehicle than the status quo. These are the type of changes that are gonna make a difference on climate change. We're like, wait, we can't double the population. We're all full. It's like, well, guess what? If our energy emissions of everybody drops 90%, then I think we could double the population. So now let's talk okay this is the model y this is the car that changes everything it's going to be the number one selling car in the world it's the car i have it's the car julian has the car noah has which is epic and the skeptics were like this isn't even going to exist when we were flying tests like this elon's a fraud he's just pulling this out of his ass because he's desperate and he doesn't know what he's doing it's like number one selling car on the planet by unit volume not a shitty twenty five thousand dollar camry but a fifty to sixty thousand luxury car how is that even possible no one would have been able to comprehend that it's the tesla effect it's just that filthy of a product Okay, Tesla, when I said putting the team on the back single-handedly, this is the chart that I'm like, ooh, this is impressive. We're hitting 3% of all cars sold in the US and Canada are just Teslas, like single-handedly electrifying new car sales and making a big difference. And this is with them in the middle of scaling to ramp this up, so this chart, only continues. Okay, the other thing I think is crazy is it's not just what the car is they've changed, but it's how the car is built. Tesla innovates so fast. Elon, this is why I think Elon Musk is an engineering genius. Everyone else is like 171 parts. Like, oh, that's not structurally sound. It's going to cost too much. It takes too long to produce. It's too complicated. Tesla comes up with this crazy new stamping machine we've never seen before. Two parts for the entire vehicle, faster to produce, um, better quality and way cheaper. This is just one example. On the factory level, Tesla redesigning their factories, 17% less energy emissions for, the, for, for them to make a car that they're making probably 20 to 30% more money on. So what's the trend with Tesla? Less emissions per car, more uh, profit per vehicle as well. Like incredible. Now, safety. This is the part that I actually think should get the most love, but doesn't get the most love. Tesla is the safest car you can buy. If you're thinking about your family, about anything like that, um, and your Tesla is, if it gets in a crash, has the best crash test ratings, but it's also less likely to get in a crash because of its active software. And so this has all been verified by independent third parties in the US and Europe. And I just think this like nobody, when you think of Tesla, you're not like, oh, that's by far the safest car on the road, better than Volvo, but it is. And I think that's such a like, that what, what that's a quote from Tesla right there. Safety is our top design priority. Like that's a company I wanna invest in and be a part of. I love my Model Y. Like, I literally have a spaceship that I can get in every day. The sound system is so good that Kristoff's mad at me for showing him music because then it sucks when he plays it in his car. Like, it's, I can't, you, it's buttery smooth handling. The acceleration is out of control. It's faster than a Bugatti off the stoplight. It looks badass. In 15,000 miles, I haven't had any maintenance on my vehicle, and every single mile I've charged has been free from the supercharger network because I got referrals. Like, I almost stopped checking Tesla news or reading about the company after I got my car because I was like, I just feel it. This is the future. You step into your little spaceship um, and you're like, wow, I can't imagine what else is going to come out of this crazy company. So um, FSD beta, this is the most interesting thing. That robo taxi, that self-driving car, how do we get there? Tesla's got the Google effect. Every time you type a search into Google, you're training its neural net to get better. That's why nobody compete with Google. Every time you make a turn in your Tesla, it's all tracked by software. So they actually understand that and you're training the vehicle to drive. So Teslas are getting essentially the flywheel here is Tesla gets paid for every mile of data. Waymo, Cruise, all the other autonomous companies are paying engineers to sit in these crazy cars and paying for each mile. When Tesla has everybody paying them to get the car and then giving them all the data for free. So this there's now 35 million miles driven, 100,000 plus cars running the software. There hasn't been a single crash. This is Tesla rolling out the robo taxi and self-driving car before our eyes. Now let's talk about the economics. This is just a fun fact, a little sidetrack. 100,000 jobs, soon to be 130, 150, 200,000 jobs, US high paying manufacturing jobs. You get paid in stock. Like 
all these politicians are talking about green jobs, the green economy, and then they won't mention Tesla with all green jobs, all super high paying, but they don't pay off lobbyists. So the politicians won't even acknowledge it. I think that's bullshit anyway, but it's not stopping the nerds. The nerds want to work at Tesla. Number one and number two places to work, SpaceX and Tesla. If you tell me what are going to be the biggest companies in 10 years, I think it's where the smartest people are working today and incentivized to do their best shit. Right now, that's Tesla and SpaceX. And so this makes me even more bullish for the future for Tesla. Tesla camping, you wouldn't think this is a game changer, but I love my Tesla and camping in the back with a bed. And then I, it's called the dream case and it has camp mode. So instead of burning, you know, the engine's on, it's burning, it's polluting. Um, the little blue dot warm dial. What temperature is that? It's like on my Tesla, 64 degrees all night. Perfect. Little campfire on the screen. Like so cozy. Literally my Airbnb wherever I go. How much does that cost? Free. Like the amount of features because Tesla's software connected and electric, you can't even fathom. Supercharging, charge and chill. Like Tesla is not just the car company. They literally had to build the charging network to be able to charge those cars too. Everyone thought that was so dumb. They're going to lose all this money on it. Now the government's trying to copy it. Every other car company is like, could we pay you to join? And this is a, the best reason. Like you drive your Tesla, you can drive anywhere in the country and pretty much world with their charging network. Your car navigates to it itself. And in the future, they're going to have like diners there. They're experimenting with a little hot tub. There's going to be a lot of like cool stuff with that. Um, but I just think that's a cool example of, of the Tesla story. And that's the example of like, oh, how is Tesla bigger than Ford or GM? Because think about Exxon, Shell, the oil companies that distribute the oil, Saudi Aramco, $2 trillion company that actually mines the oil, Tesla solar panels, that's making the oil. They distribute the energy via their uh, like supercharger network. Uh, you know, so that's basically Exxon and Shell. And you have the car. So you have the trifecta energy flywheel of energy production, consumption and storage. And that's why they're going to be. And you think about the value of like all those companies combined and you're like oh shit that's like five trillion and tesla's doing it all so still so early that's what i'm saying robo taxi 20 million that's going to be epic but what is the other stuff that okay tesla's car business the robo taxis they're one thing going to change the world i think this is the more fun cool shit the cyber truck like i mean you see that driving you think aliens are invading like this just looks so badass and dope and it's stainless steel it's rugged af um it's just bold and dope and it's gonna usher in a new era of brutalist design and like a new moment for humans like if the aliens are watching they're gonna see the cyber truck on the road and be like damn like that is actually dope you know what i mean like they finally made a move like look at this i call this anunnaki minimalism like the inside of the cyber truck is just so like that looks like the future. Okay, the te this is underrated. 3% of cars on the road are trucks, but the real kicker here is that trucks are like 40% of emissions and a huge hazard to road safety. Your truck's going too slow up the hill because it's not electric in a Tesla. Your driver's tired because it's not driving itself because it's a Tesla. Its emissions are super high because it's not electric because it's not a Tesla. Solve, solve, solve. Huge multi-hundred billion dollar business of moving stuff, not people. You talk about layering in autonomy, so trucks are following themselves, turning into a train on the highway, deploy when they get to cities. Warren Buffett's rail companies are all of a sudden out of business. Truck expands because of this disruption so this is like and this is coming this is some illuminati shit that tesla hasn't released that i think they will that the, this guy on twitter called alwyn art who is such a badass um makes these renders and so th this is just unofficial iding scheme scheming this is the tesla robo taxi van so it's like a van it's like uber pool but in a product so you can, or you're like wait i need to get out all the seats because i need to like carry shit you know like so practical so functional so much range that's a product that is in tesla and it all starts with the atomic unit of tesla right they have the battery so once you have the world's best battery and drivetrain technology it's a matter of time before you proliferate that into every single use case now we're talking this it's a wheelchair sometimes our friends have to get hip surgeries they need a wheelchair they're not looking cool with their wheelchair. Now, all of a sudden, you're the coolest guy in the room. And it's just like, I just want one of these. Like, this is so dope. Okay, this is just, I'm only going to spend 30 seconds on this. But the cyber jet, Elon Musk has been scheming on this jet that vertically takes off and lands 100% electric. You don't need to go to airports. This is landing right, this might even land right here on my roof. Like, I don't know. It could even just fit right here, pick us all up. Bam, it's self-driving, goes to everywhere we go. Like, this is the true Iron Man shit that's coming if we give Elon enough time and money and resources and that Tesla could build. The batteries get light enough, the drivetrain's efficient enough, then we can electrify aircraft. We don't have to have these huge airports that are super annoying to go to, the worst experience ever, taking my shoes off, standing where everyone else's stand, like... I just think that's gross. And imagine if you're, you could go to these small regional airports where you could just check in, this jet picks you up and you fly, it totally changes travel for the medium distance. Maybe it'll just be for super rich people, probably will never happen, but like 
you got to think outside the box of where does this go for Tesla? Like once they commercialize this technology, what's next? Energy. Smaller business for Tesla. But when I think about world peace, Russia, all this stuff going on in the world, what does it boil down to? Energy. Who's got control over the energy they produce? I think it's so empowering for freedom, for just everything, uh, for humans to have sovereignty over their energy. And that's what Tesla's building uh, with their energy business. I think this is a huge opportunity, but it's really hard to scale. So it's not like this isn't a dope business. It's just that Tesla's car business has scaled so quickly that you lose sight of how awesome the energy business is. So it's a $3.4 billion business this year. Okay, no more numbers. I'm sorry. But this is the dope solar roof. So instead of putting panels on your roof, like retroactively, all of a sudden now we're, the roof has the panel. Like it's more complicated. It's taking time to scale. There's lots of problems, but it's like, wait, this is way better. Instead of basically doing two roofs, we just do one. So that allows us to uh, like put in the cost of the solar better and it looks way better. So I think you look around everywhere, how, mu how much sunlight is hitting all of these buildings? How much have solar panel? Almost none. Instead, all of us are importing energy from halfway across the world from who the hell knows where, paying hella money to do it and polluting, just letting all the sunlight go to waste every single day. So that's a problem, but it's an opportunity that Tesla's solving. Solar, 400 megawatts of energy installed. So this is for the super Tesla nerds. They acquire t Solar City, so it spikes, but then they change the model away from leasing, get it or from loans. I think it's leasing and then back up now that they've had the solar roof and have switched this model. So I think this is going to continue hitting its stride. 400 megawatts of energy is about 80,000 homes. So Tesla builds about 80,000 homes worth of solar panels per year now. And that's booming. We just still even think of that. So there's about 1.4 million new homes built in the US each year. So 6% of the incremental new homes are already just instantly electric because Tesla's building them. That's a way to think about it. So to me, it's like, we don't even think about this as a big business. We don't think of it as having that big of an impact, but already 80,000 homes worth a year and climbing, that's something. Mega packs, huge batteries. This is the other side of the energy equation that's an absolute game changer. This business has seen insane growth, as you can see, limited by chip shortages. Um, but they've just built a massive new factory for this. So this is going to scale up way, way bigger. Tesla's saying, like, we don't need coal fired power plants. We don't need natural gas power plants. We can just build you a ton of batteries and solar panels. That's what this is going to look like. And that's the factory to pump all of those out. And the even more interesting like tangent on all of this is what's happening in blockchain and crypto right now. Finance is converging with energy. All the new financial systems we're seeing gaining rapid market share are backed by one thing, a decentralized network of miners who are relying on energy to fund everything they're doing. So like Kathy Wood says, the Bitcoin miner or the energy asset owners of today are the Bitcoin miners of tomorrow. If you're pumping out hella energy, you're going to want to tap into crypto to be able to sell it into that and back up these blockchains. So it's way far out there. It's an extremely like moonshot idea, but I can't help but see the worlds of energy and finance converging and Tesla being the biggest player in energy, which means they're going to have a huge hand in the blockchain. They were also an early adopter of buying Bitcoin on their balance sheets. So there's that. Robots. All right, we're getting in. This is like, it's almost done, I promise. Are you guys fucking with it? Yeah. Robots. <laughs> uh, okay, robots. This is like, first of all, this is a robot you don't even realize is a robot. Four wheels, okay? Just a robot you can sit in. But Tesla's already been building robots. It has the cameras everywhere. And what's important about that car robot for the Black Mirror future where robots are our overlords is that those robots who are our overlords need to know how to navigate within space. Like, if they're going to punch you or steal your shit or... I don't know. Then they need to know where you are and what's happening in the world and how to drive the getaway car or whatever. And so they need to understand where they are in space, even if it's just folding your laundry and cooking eggs. They need to understand that. So that's the same core technology that Tesla's car have is understanding the outside world, building a neural net to process that and make a decision with how to interact in that 3D space that it's created in its head. So that's why Tesla came up with the robot. They said, screw the car with like 90% less raw materials. We can give you something that actually falls you into your house and has all this new functionality. So Tesla's about to unveil the real robot in a couple days. I don't know if this video will be out by then, but it's going to, I mean, it's going to take so long to commercialize. They're going to say it's coming soon. It won't. It's going to take a while. It's going to start in factories. But this to me is like a huge moment for humans. It's like we're farming. We're hunters and gatherers. Now all of a sudden farms are invented and like we have a little bit of time freed up. We start being creative. We invent all these things. It's like a psh, explosion for humanity because we've saved time. So this to me, it boils down to one thing, time for humans. It could save you thousands of hours per year. Every human saving thousands of hours per year. This is such a bigger technology than cars. Um, um, and it's like, 
I don't know if I'm doing a good job at quantifying how much this will change our everyday lives, but I think this is going to be the biggest things to happen in our lifetimes. Like we think about what we did that our grandkids do that's different. So much of that will be because of this product. So even if it takes 10 years, it's coming. This is just to nerd out 50,000 Tesla bots at 800 million a pop one. That's one for every 10 humans. I'm having at least two of my own. So that's why I was like, shit, one for 10 <laughs> Like that's is 40 trillion a year. Like what? That's like bigger than the entire global economy. So, and the global economy will grow. It's like, how are we going to live on Mars? Tesla bots are going to help us, right? Like all this crazy stuff we wouldn't have been able to do, um, but Tesla bots are now going to do it. So this is dwarfing the last business opportunity, the robo taxi, which is already dwarfing cur Tesla's current business. So when you think about the arc of Tesla, you think about cars, trucks, electrifying any everything, autonomous cars, energy, take them into new heights, robots. And then that's like, pff, take over the world. Anyway, heads exploding. So they're going to unveil more about this on the 30th. I was just guessing there. Who knows what it'll be. Now let's talk about the real guy who's bringing this all together, the Tesla bot. So the reason why I own Tesla stocks, my biggest investment, is because I want to put my money where the smartest inventor alive and engineer has his money and where he's incentivized to put his innovations. So what is Elon Musk doing? He said, I created Tesla. All my innovations in robotics and technology and manufacturing are going in this company. And that's why Wall Street can't fathom or understand what Elon Musk is doing because they're not inside his brain and they don't have... If Elon Musk hasn't told us it's coming, we can't put it in our spreadsheet. And even if he has told them, they're not still not putting it in their spreadsheet because they don't believe him. So, but the reality is, is Elon's inventions, owning Tesla stock is like owning a call option on the greatest, never expiring call option on the greatest inventor alive. So it's like buying stock in Archimedes in his heyday before he's invented all of his great shit and getting royalties on all of the great shit he's about to invent. That's like what owning Tesla stock is. And people want to hate on Elon Musk and say, oh, he's crazy he's doing this. It's like the bottom line is this dude, or actually, whoops. The reason why I think he's going to make Tesla stock go up is because he owns 150 billion. So you think about uh, Mary Barra, the CEO of GM, she's got like no stock, like no stock. She didn't start the company. She doesn't care about GM. It was a good job she got. She's making like 20 million cash. She doesn't give a shit about GM share price or future or electric vehicles. She's like living the cushy life, about to retire soon, making hella money. Incentives are aligned. Elon's salary, zero. Zero dollars. Because he's like, yep, I own 150 billion in stock. You think I need to get paid a mil in salary? Nah. I'm going to 10x this 150 bill, 15% of Tesla. That's what he's incentivized to do. That's why he's inventing shit like the Tesla bot to make his value go up. Because he wants to fund this, Mars. That's going to cost a couple trill at least. SpaceX is going to need help. Incredible future for humanity. That is what is motivating Elon to turn Tesla into the biggest company on planet Earth is so that we can go to Mars. So, and you're like, damn, Elon Musk, can he do it? This guy has the best fucking track record alive, and it's so not even close. It's like Michael Jordan playing with kindergartners. The only person who's remotely close to these, and the, the, what's, what's so crazy about this is like, Blaster sells his first video game when he's like 14. He zipped to his mapping company, which invented vector space and mapping, which is a key part of the self-driving cars. Like Elon's in this shit as an engineer doing, pushing forward the science as well as the CEO. That is so like, we just don't, you just don't see that. So he's a coder. He codes PayPal. So they sell that for 180 mil. Start Solar City and Tesla. Solar City sells for five bill to Tesla. Tesla's worth 1.1 trill, one of the biggest companies in the world. Co-founded that. And now you got uh, SpaceX. If you float it in the free market, I think it's four or 500 billion. Founded that. Neuralink and Boring Company, each 10 billion now. Probably going to be trillion dollar companies in their own right in the future too. So I think we are witnessing, we are so lucky to be alive when Elon Musk is alive. He is the greatest entrepreneur by far of our era, maybe in history, and he's 50. He is early. He is just starting his prime, and he is building out this incredible empire, and he is laying out all the clues for why Tesla is going to be the biggest company ever, going to electrify and autonomize transportation, then going to come out with the robots. He's going to use that to fund Mars, put chips in our brain put chips in our brains and put tunnels everywhere. And that's the future that's coming, whether you like it or not. And so, and actually what, not whether you like it or not, because that's why I think getting involved in Tesla is so cool. You own Tesla stock. You're literally an owner in this empire. Like anybody can join in and own a piece of this empire. You get a vote in Tesla stock. It runs like a democracy. You can figure out what we want to work on. I don't know. But the point being is like, you don't just look at it and be like, this empire is being created. Elon Musk is getting so rich. It's like, nah, he's bringing us all with him. Like he's creating this empire and saying, who wants to join me? Like buy into it. This is the crazy, inspiring, exciting future that I'm working towards. And are you in? So my theory to wrap this all up is every day that Tesla survives, the future gets brighter because I believe that if Tesla failed two years ago, like the electric car would have stopped. 
Now, maybe it's just far enough to where electric cars will take off if Tesla dies, but every day that they go forward, it pushes people to innovate faster. They're literally selling more and more cars. They're reinvesting those profits into bigger batteries, into new systems to heat and cool our homes, into new trucks that are electric too. Like, I think the best thing you can do for climate change is buy a Tesla, and that sounds dumb because it's an $80,000 car, but those profits and all that money gets reinvested into the number one team in engineers in the world to design shit to fight climate change. I can't think of a better way. And it's like, what other entity came out of thin air to sell a million electric cars on the way to sell 20 million? None. Everyone else is just talking about the green revolution and climate change without doing fucking anything except Tesla. And so that's why the people who say they care about climate change but don't like Tesla, to me, have totally missed the point and don't understand what's happening. And whether you're a Tesla shareholder or not or fanboy or not, if you're on Team Human and you want us to prosper in the future, you want Tesla to survive and continue and proliferate this clean energy technology. So that's it. I'm going to open it up to questions, but I want to give you I want to give a shout out to the viewers on the Internet. All my best homies for coming and supporting me, which is so, like, I appreciate y'all. And, um, yeah, Hypercharts, RIP, but that had the data. I got it before it shut down. Jay Filchy for being with me. Emotional support, homie. Meyer gave me the ROIC data. Tesla Money Mafia, Rob and Matt, um, the homies, obviously. And Vice, they helped me set up, and they're filming. So, you guys are awesome. Thank you. And, all right, I just wanted to, and, like, fuck it, we're rolling. Like, who, the homies want to, you guys want anything? Like, ask a question uh this is a two-part question um have you seen irobot and do the robots make you nervous <laughs> okay i this is dope i haven't seen irobot but you're kind of talking about like the robot revolution though yeah, I mean, uh, let me just tell like you. what makes you nervous so i believe elon he elon musk has been saying that self-drive or that robots are gonna like the biggest threat to humanity, according to Elon Musk, is AI getting good, right? And so he started this nonprofit trying to make sure AI is okay and it's good. He couldn't control it. And he's like, what government's going to build the AI robot? And I think he just decided, fuck it, I'm going to do it. Somebody's going to build this shit and I don't trust it to be good if I don't build it. And so Elon Musk said, I'm going to build it and I'm going to build it first. And it's going to be five, nine. So it's not too big. It's only going to go four <laughs> miles an hour so you can outrun it. And I thought about that. I was like, I'm only going four miles an hour for three hours. Then I'm stopping. So it's catching up. Like, I don't know. But like, you know, we've seen Ex Machina. Um, I mean, it, it feels like inevitable. Like that, it took me by surprise when Tesla came out the Tesla bot because it's like shit. Like, what are we doing? It's not clean energy. It's not electric cars. It's something new. And so it changed the mission for Tesla more fundamentally than anything ever, um, which is worth thinking about. I mean, like, okay, now I'm not just investing in like this la da da like tree hugger clean energy company. I'm investing also in this tech powerhouse that like wants to make robots go everywhere and have them do shit for us. So um, the future is going to get weird, but it's also like you can't be a Luddite. Like we're in the era of hyper change. Things are going faster than ever. Like robots are doing my laundry, cooking me breakfast. And it's weird because there's a robot looking human thing charging at night in my home. But like my breakfast is cooked. I'm getting freshly made cinnamon rolls every morning. Like that just wasn't happening before. <laughs> so it's worth it. And like my laundry's clean. My house is clean. Like, I don't know. So I feel like it'll be trade-offs like every new technology. Like it'll be scary as hell and it'll be super weird. But it'll have huge benefits. And then the AI will be secretly pleasing us, be super pissed off because we're just abusing it. And then the revolt will happen like you're saying but hopefully like tesla stock if you th if you want to get into a really weird spot about this who controls the robots tesla who controls tesla the shareholders so tes tesla bots are governed by the community of tesla shareholders so if the robot revolution was gonna happen i would want to fucking own some tesla stock and i'm putting my money where my mouth is. i'm just saying <laughs> the i'm gonna be the first to go not because I've been their homie gassing them up this whole time. Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I've been gassing up the Tesla since day one. Like, it's like Elon made you slow. I know you could be faster. Like, you know, like, <laughs> that's a wrap. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you, the homies. Woo! Yeah. <laughs>